Aloha and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Going to the techs out here. I'm good with, here with my good old buddy, Andrew, the security guy. Hey, everybody. Aloha. He's finally back in the house for once in a while, anyway. And we have a great guest today. We have Stephen Covey, Stephen M. R. Covey, the uh, author of this fantastic book, The Speed of Trust. And if you haven't trust, read this book, get some. Look at all my little tags in here. It's awesome. <laughs> Stephen, thank you so much for coming on Absolutely. our show. Gordon. It's great Aloha. to have you here. Aloha. I'm glad you're here. So, um, thank you. it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, I'm just, you know, you're going to set our whole show up, the whole notch and a half, at least. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for joining us. Please grab yourself a libation, sit down and join us, be the fly on the wall and watch what's going on. So anyway, Absolutely. we typically ask our, all of our guests, no matter who you are, um, where you went to school? Like, where did you grow up? How did you, you know, what, what's a little background on who you are? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, uh, I went to school in Utah, Provo High School. Okay. Wow. And uh, BYU <laughs> and then Harvard Business School. All right. Wow. I'll tell you what you'll find interesting is I actually spent one year going to school at Laie Elementary School. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I was in second grade. See, that's awesome. See, that's so, something you never would have guessed. Yeah, yeah. And, hey, and, uh, you'll be crushed if he goes up. There's a hotel up there now. <laughs> is that right? Best Western. It took, something? took place in, in La Ia. Overran my school. Yeah, the oh, school's there, but there's a, there. It's a, you have to swing by there if you're going North Shore. But that yeah. makes you one local boy. Well, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'd like to claim it. I don't know if you'll claim me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that's terrific. That's terrific. Anyway, and I, I had the pleasure of seeing your dad many decades ago uh, presenting and, you know, magnificent man, just magnificent. And I learned a lot from him and my success is based on a lot of the things that he taught me oh, when, when he was there. So it's great. And Thank then your you. book is terrific. I mean, I just can't. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't read it until you know you were coming on the show. <laughs> but boy, I tell you, I, I got into it big time. And I, and I got to say one thing, you know, and we'll get into your, your commentary, yeah. but I've been doing work with Andrew for decades, and I never realized that all my work I do with him is based on one thing, trust. Yeah. yeah. Trust. We do, we do stuff without contracts. Yeah. We just do it. Because you trust each other. We trust each other. And so, so, so with that, let's talk about, you know, you have this thing, the five waves of trust. So what are the five waves of trust? Yeah. Well, the whole idea is that kind of trust is built and sustained, grows from the inside out. Okay. So I use the metaphor, the ripple effect, you know, water, a drop of water comes down, the ripples, the waves go out. The first wave, where it all begins, is with ourselves, self-trust. Okay. Because think about it, if, you, if, if we don't trust ourselves, how are we going to build trust with other people? It's hard. At some point, that distrust of self will leak out, bleed out into the relationship. Okay. But then from ourself, it moves out into our relationships. Now you build trust one-on-one. -on -one. It's just like you, Gordon, working with Andrew. You know, you trust yourself. You then build trust with each other. The relationship, you build a relationship of trust. Right. So that's the second wave, the relationship trust. It then kind of ripples out again, and using the wave metaphor, right. to the third wave, which is now our team, our group, our, you know, what we might call our organizational trust. And if I'm the leader of a company, it could be the whole company, but I could be the leader of a team. It could be my team. So whatever is kind of the team, the next level, the next entity that ripples out. And from there, it ripples out yet again to our stakeholders. I call it market trust. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's trust with our customers and partners, suppliers, distributors. And from there, it ripples out yet again into all of society, societal trust. And then that's building trust in the community, trust in the broader mm -hmm. um, uh, stakeholders outside of us. And, and, um, and my main point is that, look, if you want to kind of diagnose something, the best way you diagnose is you start at the outside and you move in. Right. You look at society and the market and the organization. That, that helps us diagnose something. But if I, when it comes to trust, if I want to develop it, transform it with trust, I start at the inside and they move out. So rather than looking at everyone else and saying, you know what, I can't trust them, that might be true, but how are we going to change it? I've got to look in the mirror mm -hmm. and start, do I trust myself? Do I give to my team a leader they can trust? And then let that ripple out from yourself to your relationships, to your team, to your group, to the market, to the society. So diagnose from the outside in, but develop, ch change, transform from the inside out. out. That's how trust works. So it's an inside out process. So you think from, from a business perspective, and Andrew, I'm going to pick on your company just because yeah, we do sure. work. And I, I'll use uh, Brian Malasek, who's been another guest on our mm -hmm. show, whose company I do work with. And again, I don't do contracts with this guy because it's all based on trust. Yeah. But you know what? His crew, and your wife's in charge of your company, when your wife's crew is on the job, I trust them. Sure. It's the crew. It's there. I just know I can trust that they will do what they say they're going to do. I'll give you an, an interesting thing. So we had our, our quarterly meeting yesterday, and we're, we're big on openness. We're big on trust. Our, our attractions, you know, how, how there's a trusted room. We can share the, yeah. hard, the hard problems that we got to work on. There's, there's all these things to work on. You've got to be honest, and you've got to trust people to share. 
and we took the to the test yesterday. We, we tested ourselves on these Steve 100 Richard. points. Yes, out of about eight. I said, you guys are going to love this. And everybody was like, wow, they, they didn't really score as well as they thought. So we've all got some gaps that we can work on, which was great because there's also tools for ways to help improve. And yeah. it's going to start there. You know, I yeah. love it. Absolutely. See, I, I kind of, we, we all intuitively know that trust matters. But what you mm -hmm. two described at the outset, what, you know, you said, hey, you know, I, I trust Andrew. We can work together. I never wrote it down. That's, that's <laughs> right. It's, but, but you can feel it, right? Yeah, sure. You trust, you know it when you feel it. And, and uh, what you feel is confidence rather than suspicion. But I call it the high trust dividend mm -hmm. as opposed to the low trust tax. Okay. See, when people don't trust each other, everything takes you longer and everything costs you more. Because mm. you now got to take all these steps to, you know, to compensate for that lack of trust. Yep. You got to check. You got to verify. You got to validate. You got to question. You got to. You're suddenly you hiring lawyers. <laughs> you know, hey, 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 <laughs> nobody wants yeah, to do what's that. What's the agenda? So that contract, you not only have the contract, but it's this thick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the less trust, the thicker the contract. Sure. Right? No, it's but, very. Oh, cool. I so like that. It takes you. It takes you longer, costs you more. That, that's what I call a tax. That's a low a tax. trust tax. There's no it's doubt about real. it. I never thought of it that way. It's very real, but the good news is the dividend is equally real. When there's high mm -hmm. trust in the relationship or on the team, yeah. in the company, in the culture, with the customer, when there's high trust, the speed goes up with it. Oh, Everything happens faster. You're so right. And the cost comes down. It costs you less. And then that is a dividend, a high trust dividend. It's that simple. So why do we not know this? <laughs> well, we, we all kind of know that trust matters, but we never kind of put it in economic terms. Yeah. yeah that's so I, what I tried to do with Speed of Trust was to put trust in financial terms. Yes. That it's not just social, it's financial. It affects the speed at which we can move and the cost of everything. Mm -hmm. And when there's high trust, it's a dividend. When there's low trust, it's a tax. And to kind of have that paradigm and let people see it maybe for the first time and to, and to quantify it. And then kind of the second big thing is that it's learnable. We can move the needle on it. It's not just mm -hmm. yes. something you either have or you don't. And that whole five waves is saying, look, you start and you go inside out, starting with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, and so uh, one of the things in the book was you know, like Warren Buffett, how many deals he put, billion dollar deals together in 30 days. Absolutely. They're based on trust. In fact, I, I was, I've been with a couple of the CEOs that he's done these deal, deals with, and um, they said it's amazing. I mean, one was Grady Rogier, McLean, $23 billion company, so a huge company. Yeah. The deal takes place on a single, after one meeting, one meeting. on a single handshake. <laughs> A uh, twenty-three billion. Billion. That's a B. A B. It's by the way, folks. Uh, twenty-three. Uh, so they, they have one meeting of two hours. They shake hands. Twenty-nine days later, they have their money. They did no traditional due diligence. Why? Because they started with trust. You know, Buffett himself is so credible and trusted. It's like a currency for him. Yes. He's got a reputation that precedes him. Right. Just like you, you kind of said, like when I deal with Andrew and his team, I know that I can trust him. Yeah. That's a brand, a reputation, a currency. Buffett's the same. They can go in, and, and Buffett knew about Grady Rozier that he would always do what he says he's going to do. Mm -hmm. So with trust, they can go in, do a deal on a handshake, close it in less than one month with no due diligence. That's what I call the speed of trust. Mm -hmm. Without trust, you could never do that, or it'd be foolish to try. Oh, yeah, it'd be, it'd be crazy. It'd be just crazy to try. So then we start looking at the you know, speed of trust. Then we notice the foundation. You have this. Yeah. You talk about the foundation. So kind of elaborate on that and, and educate us on this. I'm sorry we only got 28 minutes, so I, we're cramming you like crazy. Uh, I haven't done good. <laughs> He'll be available tonight if you're going to be at the BBB. Yeah. I have another show in here tonight, or I'd be down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I've been invited to be part of the Hawaii's BBB, the right. that, annual that, torture war. Torture war. That's yes. going to be amazing. Yeah. For, yeah. For right. ethics, that's great. Really excited. And these are these are local uh, companies, businesses that are kind of good standards and models of ethics and excellence and trust, right. really, which is the BBB. And which we're part of. All about. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, you're part of that. Yeah. So, so, it's cool. so talk about yeah. the foundation now. So, you, I love the waves. Now we got the foundation. Yeah. So the next piece. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, my premise is that trust is learnable. Okay. For a leader, for a team, for an organization. And you got to go inside out. That was the five waves model, which is saying, don't wait another, start with yourself, and then ripple out. Okay. Now, what do you do? Okay, well, the first thing is to put in place the foundation. And I use as the foundation, use the metaphor of a tree. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the foundation is the idea of credibility. Right. Trust starts with credibility. That, for the Latin term, credere, it means to believe. Okay. So credibility is believability. And I use the metaphor of the tree, where you got the roots and the trunk of the tree. See, that's like character. The roots is integrity. I start with the foundation of integrity. And then the trunk is intent. That's my agenda, my motive. And if people are seeking mutual benefit, right. you know, win-win mm -hmm. instead of win-lose, mm -hmm. or if they, and, and they're also, they care about those that they're serving and working with, people tend to trust them. But if they, if they don't think you care, 
or they think that you have an agenda, a mm -hmm. self-serving agenda, they tend not to trust you. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if you don't have the roots, the integrity, sure. they don't trust you. So integrity is the roots. Intent is the trunk, the caring, the mutual benefit. That's part of, part of our character. Then the upper half of the tree is flows from our competence. Mm -hmm. Because not enough that someone's honest, they also have to be able to deliver. Yeah, they have to be good at what they Yeah, they gotta be good. Can they do what they said? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And and uh, you know, if they're honest but they can't deliver, then hey, I trust them if they're going on vacation. <laughs> Need someone to wash my <laughs> home, right? Because yeah. they're honest. <laughs> right. But I'm not gonna put them on the project yeah. right. if they can't deliver. So I gotta have the upper half. The upper half is the competence half. Right. And so I use the branches of the tree and the fruits. And the branches is our capabilities. You know, what's our expertise, our knowledge? And the key question here is are we relevant? Yeah. Especially in a changing world, right? We've got to stay relevant, learning, growing, improving, staying relevant. So those branches produce the fruits, and the fourth core of credibility are, are those fruits. And that's our results, mm -hmm. our performance. Yeah. And you know, our past performance, our current performance, why does that matter? Because people project upon us future performance. When they see a track record of results, it gives them confidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if there's no results, then it's kind of like, mm. I'm not quite sure. I, I like you. I You're mean, honest. I trust I'm you. Sure. And I, I like you. Trust you. It, but, so, you know, you need to see the upper half of the tree as well as the lower half. And the, and the combination of that character and the competence, those four dimensions, right. is credibility. And with credibility, you can build trust exceptionally fast. So Warren Buffett, he's so credible, mm -hmm. he's got a reputation for it, he can go in and without a lot of interaction with people, he's already on third base. He's, you know, because he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's credible. It's just because he walked in the door. He walks in the door. <laughs> credibility, character, competence, these four dimensions. And, and so you can build trust exceptionally fast that way. So with that foundation, you can do everything else so much better, so much faster. And it's a great way of starting. And the great thing about it is it's practical. I can get my arms around that and kind of look at, hey, is, if, if there's a lack of trust for whatever reason, it's one thing if there's a lack of trust, say, because there's, there's you know, low integrity. Right, right. That's one kind of issue. But what if there's a lack of trust because of low results? Yeah, that's a different a, issue. That's a different but issue. what if it's but, low intent that you're seen as being self-serving, mm -hmm. or low capabilities you're not seen as current and relevant? These are all different issues. These four cores of credibility help you pinpoint it and to diagnose it, to know what it is, and most importantly, to know what to do about it. Now you can move it quicker. Yeah. I, I kind of wonder where Warren Buffett it, it, was he imbued with trust, or did he, has he ever describe to you where he learned that and, and how this emanates from him so readily? Yeah, I think that, that uh, if you look at his track record over five decades in kind of public life this way as a CEO, you see he always saw the importance of the roots of the tree and the trunk, the right. kind of the, mm. the, the character. character. You know, he's known for integrity. Mm -hmm. But then also, what really puts him over the top is not just the character side. That's, that's what gets him in the game, but then his performance. Yeah. His track record. Which is like unmatched. Unmatched. Sure. And you play it out over time, it's unmatched. And so, so he's credible. When, people, when Warren Buffett talks, people listen. So, no so, so believe it or not, we've gone through the first 14 minutes. So <laughs> we're going to take okay. a break. And you're not too excited about what you're talking about. <laughs> I hope not. Awesome. I, 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 we, oh, we can maybe elevate you a little bit. Elevate you a little bit. Good. It's great With stuff. Stephen Kennedy, I got Andrew, the security guy, go to the tech hour. We're going to get Angus for a brief minute. And then we'll come back and we're going to talk about another segment that, uh, in the book that I truly liked. So anyway, we'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm Tim Apicello. I'm the host of Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic issues here on Oahu. Uh, join us every other Tuesday at 12 noon. And as we discuss how we try to solve our traffic headaches, not to not to include just the rail, but transit and carpooling and everything in between. So join us every other Tuesday, moving Hawaii forward. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Ah! Hi everyone, Ted Rolson here, host of our Think Tech show, Where the Drone Leads. And a lot of you, of course, have been setting your clocks at uh, uh, 4 o'clock on Friday so that you can make sure you see our show. It's now changed. It's now going to be at noon on Thursdays. Noon on Thursdays, new standard time for Where the Drone Leads. And Where the Drone Leads is to systems like this, capabilities that we're using here in Hawaii these days. And we need you to pay attention to this, be part of it. So see you at noon on Thursdays. Hey, 
Hey, aloha everybody and welcome back to Hibachi Talk. We found Angus down on the beach as usual. Angus, what do you got for us today, buddy? How you doing there, dude? Very well, man. You know, I want, to, I want to tie today because we got Mr. Covey in the house. Good. I'm glad you, you're looking spiffy. Yeah, look at me, spiffy. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, wanna, yeah, I thought you didn't want to tie, so I was already set up for it. Hey, thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, thank you. Andy. Yeah, usually I do a wee gadget, but today I'm just going to do one little thing, and then you never have to say anything. But you know, I'm a wee, I'm a wee PA at the government right now. Oh, so let me, hey, let me show you a little picture. This is a walk around tune. And then look, and this is three poles I found in the past week. This is it. This is the City and County of Honolulu is that our, Committee. That's our maintenance program? That's our maintenance program. So, you know what? Guess what? I didn't have trust in government. And I'm going to leave it with that. So, anyway, but thank you so much for being on the show. And like I always say at the end of every show, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! <laughs> Angus, <laughs> Angus is, doesn't trust government. What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> How does how do we keep trust in government? This is a kind of a good, you know, it goes out to that societal Absolutely. ring there at the end, and we take all our trust out, and what's government give us back? Uh, <laughs> what happens? You know, where does it? Where's the trust lost? Right? Or, or where's it? Where's it gained? Or how do we get them to? How do how do how do, how do we get? How do we trust them again? I guess nice what I'm trying try. to say. gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to put yeah. you on this I spot. want to trust, and I want to believe. <laughs> I, I do. Yeah. And I do it often. But yeah, maybe not absolutely. as often as I'd like. Well, it's interesting because if you look at the data, um, Edelman Trust Barometer, other measures of trust, there's no question that as a society we've lost trust in many of our institutions, including mm -hmm. in government yeah. and political parties. And, and, and universities. And, and you can just and get down the list. And in policing. Media, and so many exactly. different mm. institutions, and, and, um, including in large business and, and yes. the like. And so yeah. mm. here's, here's the key principle because this is not easy. No, nope. um, uh, you know, re regaining trust, restoring trust. But here's the key principle: we, we, you can't talk yourself out of a problem that you behaved yourself into. <laughs> That's Ooh. a good one. So there you go. If, if we've lost people's trust because of our behavior, the only way to get it back is through our, our behavior. behavior. Yep. Words alone are necessary, but they're insufficient. Yep. Okay. We've got to behave our way back into trust, and we need to do that as a society as leaders and my main thing is that that while it's very real what's happening all around us in society and in the marketplace and with government and other institutions where maybe we're seeing a loss of trust is that rather than kind of letting that then define us and how we approach it that's that's too much outside in mm -hmm. is that let's try to give them an example of building trust the high trust team high trust group high trust culture let that ripple out and watch the effect that we might be able to have in our communities in our businesses, and ultimately, maybe even ripple out into all of society. So, so you even think sports? I mean, you just—I mean, I don't know what—it just triggered me. I saw uh, Rolovich, a coach of the University of Hawaii football team, yeah. in downtown today, uh, trying to raise money for the football team. Now, this is a coach of the University, a Division One football team, yeah. down in downtown. I mean, and there's a lot of trust there. But guess what? All these players have to trust what each one of the, each one's doing. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you look at trust in sports teams and being a teammate yep. requires trust. You've got to trust both the character of your fellow teammates and their competence. Mm, for sure. Their character that they're not just out for themselves, their own glory, but rather the team. And the competence that they, they'll be where they're supposed to be, they know what they're supposed to do, and they'll do it. They know the make blocking they yeah, make that sure. blocking <laughs> method. So it is, it, again, I'm going to throw out the, the book here. But in, in this book, you have these 13 behaviors of trust. Trust. This is actually like a guide. It really is. I mean, you can yeah. sit in here and say, wow, I've got a guide helping me go through this. You have a whole chapter on behavior. I mean, yeah. all kinds of well, different things that happen. If you take the test, it shows you <laughs> what you need to work on <laughs> in yourself. And, and here, here's these 13 things that, that everyone can work. Nobody gets them all 100% all the time. It's, right. There's some situations where you maybe trust yourself or have more competence. Uh, sometimes when I'm cooking, like my wife looks at me like, could you please leave the kitchen? You know, it's like, I, I don't, I don't, must not look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think she trusts me, but that, there's that confidence That's issue. true. My wife doesn't trust me with, with doing the laundry, but there's a reason for that. See? <laughs> I don't want her to trust me for doing the laundry. So sometimes it's situational, I guess is kind of what I'm saying. But so, these, these 13 behaviors right here. So you, some of the ones that you, you've got 13 here, and we can't yeah. cover 13 in a few yeah. minutes, but some of the ones that really come come up to you that really, you know, you know, people should really start focusing on. They should focus on all 13, but right. you know, the ones that jump out at you. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's a, here's a couple, and, and I'll kind of give you a, a framework to thinking about these behaviors. Okay. There's the behavior, which is kind of straightforward, common sense. If you, you look at those 13 things, they're all straightforward. Yep. There's the opposite of the behavior, 
and then, you know, that's doing the opposite. That's also like common sense. If you do that, you're going to lose trust, of course. And then there's what I call the counterfeit behavior. And counterfeit behavior is like counterfeit money. See, it looks real, but it's not. When you're more closely mm. inspected, you realize it's fake, it's fraudulent. So let me illustrate. Okay. Let's take first first behavior. Talk straight. Right. Talk straight means that we, we tell the truth. We call things what they are. We use simple language. Candor is a language of trust. So, you know, you tell the truth, you build trust. We learned that in kindergarten, right? We also learned the opposite, <laughs> that, you know, if you lie, yep. you destroy trust. Sure. So you tell the truth, you build trust, you lie to trust. Straightforward, we learned it in kindergarten. Yep. What makes this so hard? What makes it hard yeah. is the counterfeit. Because the counterfeit behavior to talking straight is when people spin. Mm. It's the spin and the twisting and the manipulating and the posturing. It's when people, quote, they technically tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, but they leave the wrong yeah, impression. It depends on what is is. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it depends on what they're, is. Te they're technically accurate, but they're completely misleading. Mm. As yeah. a result, trust goes down. So our challenge is probably less flat out the opposite. Occasionally it is. Someone, you know, just flat out lies. You know, that's not going to work. We know that. We're going to catch it. It's the spin. Because yeah. the spin works and it's acceptable, mm -hmm. but it comes at a price. Trust goes down. And so the opposites will sink us, but the counterfeits is what's more common in, mm. in teams and cultures. Not evil people doing evil things. Occasionally it happens, yeah. but it's more that people getting trapped in you know, hidden agendas instead of creating transparency. Yeah. Over promising mm. and under delivering instead of keeping commitments. Mm. You know, pointing the finger and blaming other people instead of practicing accountability and holding yourself accountable. So I can go through all the behaviors and, and what really trips us up is that counterfeit. Yeah. But I'll highlight one of the, another behavior. So okay. I'll highlight the first and the last. Okay. The first one talks straight. Straight, right. Be straightforward, open. Um, you know, in, in fact, in this BBB uh, event tonight, tonight uh -huh. um, you know, they talk about advertise honestly and, and you have ethics and a foundation of integrity. So you're telling the truth versus trying to manipulate, mm. spin, position, posture, because that, that looks like a bait and switch. It, you know, that and it is. Is trust. It is. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and someone might say, well, I, tell, I told them the truth. You know, but they might have been misleading. Because you left something out. Right. And yeah. then you start to wonder about everything you look at. Can I believe this? And you, mm. and, and you doubt that. So, you know, the straightforward. But let me highlight the last behavior. Okay. Extend trust. Extend trust. And let me tell you why that's so vital. Because there's a reciprocity to trust and also to distrust. And when, 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 uh, when you don't trust somebody, they tend to not trust you back. Mm. And, you know, you don't trust your partner, your supplier, your distributor. They tend to not trust you. You don't trust your customer. They tend to not trust you. Right. And so distrust is contagious. Mm. People, mm. When people don't trust each other, it tends to become a vicious downward cycle. And that's kind of the challenge we have in our society today is there's so much low trust. We all become, none of us want to get burned, right? So we become more careful, cautious, guarded. We lead back with being careful, cautious, guarded. guarded. People respond back, being careful, cautious, guarded, suspicious. And it becomes a vicious downward cycle of distrust and suspicion, creating more distrust and suspicion, and everyone feeling justified. So here's my point back to you then, is that can you rebuild trust? Yes. And you talk about that in the book, yes. and I think it's a good point to try to get thought, that yeah. before we run out of time. Can you rebuild trust? Absolutely you can, but it's not easy. Yes. And, and, uh, um, but, and I also acknowledge maybe in every situation you may not have a chance. Like, Bernie Madoff might have a hard time not, rebuilding not, trust. Not. Right? Because, you know, he might be okay in the, kitchen, in the kitchen, but we can't let him cook the books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, you know, just because the nature sure. of the loss of trust right. over a period of time, so egregious. It's too big. It's too big. But, but, but in most situations, we can if we're willing to behave our way back into it. Okay. And again, we can't talk our way back into it. We've got to behave our way back into Makes it. Sense. That will take some time. So these are 13 behaviors of how you can do it. So here's how I might do it. And I'll use the behaviors to say it. Okay. So let's say I've lost someone's trust. Right. You know, one of the behaviors is I confront reality that we've lost the trust mm -hmm. versus denying it, acting like it's not there. Right. Then another behavior is I practice accountability. I own it. I take responsibility for it versus pointing the finger, blaming everybody else. Because mm -hmm. if I'm blaming everybody else... Well, there's five fingers pointing back. When you're doing this, there's fingers pointing <laughs> oh, back. Oh, 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 I had a bad day. You, yeah. know, you, you just don't take account. It's just, yeah. hey, it still yeah. was your day, right? Exactly. Still your exactly. Day. So you got to own it. Sure. Gotta, yeah, I call that practicing accountability, starting with yourself. So I confront the reality. I lost trust. I practice accountability. I own that. i got to take my part in this. Then, the, then i got to right the wrong. You know, right wrongs. Right. 
You make it right when you're wrong. That might be, include apologizing. It might mean making restitution. That's a legal concept to make whole mm -hmm. and make it right as best I can. And that will help, but there's still more I gotta do now. So I gotta clarify expectations going forward of what I'm gonna do to regain, re-earn their trust. I tell them what I'm gonna do you know, to rebuild their trust. Hey, here's what you can know about me. I wanna gain your trust back. I'm gonna make it right here. And then going forward, just know something. If I ever make you a commitment, I'm gonna keep it or else I won't make it. If I have an issue, I'll come to you with the issue. I won't, you know, I'll be transparent. I'll be open. I'll be, I'll go straight to you. I tell them what I'm gonna do. Then the most important thing, I now keep commitments. I do what I say I'm yep. going to do. And I behave my way back into trust just like I behave my way out of it. Right. And it's not easy but it's possible in most situations as long as we're willing to behave our way back into it. And I would think over time, people will forget about the distrust that they had with you and remember the trust going forward because now they're counting on you. They're counting on you and you, you build that reputation back. You, you've earned it back. Okay. It's not easy. I don't you know, yeah, want to hide that. We point, know God, that's a story with your nephew when he got, you got angry. <laughs> that was great. You know, and it took a while. And you it took, took a, a while. And you showed serious commitment to earning it back. And uh, yeah. you know, he finally said, okay, I forgive okay. you. Like, it, was, it was a while, right? It was very that's good. right. right. I, I did a dumb thing with my nephew. Great he lost story. his trust and that. I had to earn it back, and I, I couldn't just say, hey, sorry, trust yeah, me. Yeah, you had great. to see that I really cared and that I built the relationship back and I behaved my way back into and it. That's right. So uh, not that's easy, but possible. And that's encouraging because in a low trust world, if we could never restore it, we'd all be you know, discouraged about it. Well, and and, the, I, and the, I think that we can. And that tax that continues, is, when that downward spiral you're talking about, when there's distrust, every transaction costs down. more and more and more. So that it just degrades. So it's we, exhausting. We, it's we're exhausting. Running out of, you guys are coming, running out of time. We are? <laughs> <laughs> we're running out of time. Anyway, so we're running out of time. And I just think, you know, it, it, Stephen, it's, it, it's a great, great story. I encourage people to please read this book. Yes. Whether it be Thank business, you, family, book. whatever, please read. And I wish our government officials would please read this yeah, book. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Uh, but uh, it's we should send them a case of books. <laughs> Let's do that. Can they read? Oh, now I'm being a smart uh -oh. ass. Uh -oh. <laughs> anyway, Stephen, we, <laughs> we give all of our guests an autograph solo cup. And you got number 111 in this series. And we can say now it's really in high profile places. So <laughs> thank, you, <sir. laughs> thank you so much for joining us in your really busy schedule. Um, great, great luck tonight. On stage. I'm sure you'll I'm sure you have, have them, have them, them you know, standing in the aisles. And as we, you know, it's, 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 it's like, it trust, and remember, trust, trust. I'm just going to use it. I'm going to change my license plate and say trust. That's <laughs> what it's going to be. But Absolutely. thank you so much. You're welcome. And we have a close Andrew. that we do at the end of every show. We yeah. talk to you about this early. So as we do at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing?